Hello YouTube, today you will watch my most ac academic video yet. We will examine the genetics of the Elder Scrolls races. It is a really exciting topic and I will try to make it understandable for everyone, even those that have never have any sort of education in biology. So with that said, let's quickly kick off with the video. Before we even begin, some might say, Zork, what are you doing? Genetics have no place in a fantasy game. But in fact they do. <laughs> in the book House of Troubles, we can find that in game it is specifically mentioned in that book. In the book, which, which you can find in game, it is mentioned that Molag Ball tried to screw with the Dunmer gene pool. The word gene pool is specifically mentioned. It feels really out of character because you wouldn't expect it. But it's mentioned, thus we can conclude that at least a part of earthly genetics are true for the Elder Scrolls races, the genes. But with that said, some of you might have already like traumas from your high school period of biology and some of you might have never even gotten this. So you will need to have a basic understanding of human genetics to understand this video. So let me explain that first, in a very basic level that even people that are very dumb can understand, <laughs> I hope. Human genetics in the end all come to, down to DNA. That's what those helixes you always see are. DNA is made up of four basic components. You don't really need to know the names or anything of the components. You just need to know that their abbreviations are A, T, G and C. These uh, components form the long helix string like this. All your genetic info, hair color, skin color, genetic diseases, allergies, all of them are on this gigantic string of A, T, G and C. And that string is called DNA. The order of those components A, T, G and C determines everything. As those form your own unique genetic code. For example, this piece of DNA is a code for something. Perhaps hair color. While this piece may be for a disease. These, uh, these segments, also the coding segments, are the codes. And they, those codes are called the genes. So if this piece has the codes for brown hair, for example, you have the gene for brown hair. In real life, those pieces of DNA, the genes, are way longer than this. But this is just a small illustration. All these genes determine everything in your body. How the process works that converts these codes into action in your body doesn't really matter for this video. All you have to know is that your own things <laughs> in your body, everything, is coded by these things. These codes. So these long helix structures called DNA are tightly winded together to make them more compact in your body. Otherwise they would be kilometers and kilometers long. Really, they would be. Give it a Google. When the wind, when winded tightly together, the DNA is called a chromosome, like this. And the chromosomes always come in pairs in your body. Every human has 23 pairs of chromosomes, so every human has 46 chromosomes. Some humans have 47 chromosomes, this is what's called the Down syndrome. People with more than 47 chromosomes or less than 46 chromosomes actually don't exist, as those babies cannot live so they will never grow up. However, animals, which are of course different species from humans, do have different amounts of chromosomes. There are even some insects with over 100, but also some creatures with just under 20. Even some that have only 4. But what you have to realize is that the amount of these chromosomes do not really matter. It's all about the coding parts of the chromosomes, the genes, so the codes, as I said before. As a lot of the DNA does not really do anything, and a lot of these helixes are just called junk DNA. A creature can have 100 chromosomes with 99% uh, with of it uh, junk DNA. So basically then it would mean that only one chromosome worth of DNA just spread it among all the other chromosomes actually does anything. While others can have only 10 chromosomes with only 10% of junk. Which means that 90% of all the code on all those chromosomes actually does things. And basically this is all you need to know for this video and for your Dutch Havo High School biology exam. Oh, poor you that you were thinking this was going to be a fun video. <laughs> so, 
So the reasons animals can live with more or less chromosomes is because of their DNA codes for different processes than us. We wouldn't need a process to convert oxygen in water to oxygen that we can actually use like fish. Well, fish don't need, well, the genes to walk or something. I don't know. We, and then I say all species, only need the genes for us to function. I mean, a human needs 46 to function, but another species might need 10 to function, or even 100, depending on which codes they need to live. There's one last thing there, there is to cover. All of us have one pair of chromosomes, the 23rd pair of chromosomes. These are the sex chromosomes. For men, it's a Y chromosome and an X chromosome, and women have two X chromosomes. When a child is made, it gets 23 chromosomes from the father and 23 chromosomes from the mother. Those form the pairs. Which one, X or Y, they get from the father is completely random. So the chance for a girl and a boy is always 50%. As men have both the X and the Y equally, and thus when divided, you can have only two options. Boy, XY, or girl, XX. As the woman only has an X to give. This is quite important for to understand certain problems we encounter further up in the video. There are actually two more things we need to cover in Zork's biology class. First, genetic information that you get from your parents. If one of your parents has a disease, it can be a dominant gene or a recessive gene. Dominant means that you have a big percentage of chance of, to give it to your children. Recessive means that it's a way smaller chance. I know it's more complicated, you biology professors in the comments, but I'm trying to make it understandable and it's all you need to know for this video. So one last thing we will cover is also more complicated in real life, but I will really bug down to one thing in this video is chromosome pair 15. Chromosome pair 15 has a big effect on racial traits in humans, eye color, skin color, etc. So with already a video on its own behind us, let's talk about what you actually came for here, the Elder Scrolls races and their genetics. I will not talk about the origin stories for each race, nor the religious aspects of those stories, but what is important to know is that all human races we see stem from a common human ancestor, often called the Needs, although there is debate on whether the Red Guards actually stem from the Needs, or if the Needs and the Red Guards have their own ancestor altogether. So let's not name this common ancestor, and let what because what's important for this video is that you have to accept that all humans have one common ancestor. As to the elvish races, actually, or all the races of myrrh, as most people call them. They share one ancestor, the Aldmer, with a D, not the T. Altmer, oh, Altmer is High Elf. But then again, some are more closely related to this common ancestor than others. We know that the orcs, Orsmer, are also a race of myrrh. But that they are further distanced from their common ancestor genetically. I will elaborate on that further in this video. So we have the, those two ancestor races, the human ancestor and the elvish ancestor. These two also have a common ancestor to them, the Elnofe, from which those two uh, ancestors originated. The Elnofe were the original race of Nern. They are a complete <laughs> lore video on their own and I will definitely do that one day, So, but will not cover the Elnofe in this video. For this video, just know that they are the common ancestor of Mer and Man. Then there's the beast races. First, let's do the Argonians. Argonians are created by the His to be their intelligent servants. They actually hatched from eggs. And well, for all terms and purposes, they are really different from humans and elves and do not share their ancestors. They are therefore a completely different species, like how we see cows as a different species or rabbits or fish. I mean, they're completely different species. They don't share our ancestors with any of the other races. Then lastly we have the Khajiit. The origin of the Khajiit is actually very debated. Some, says some say that they were actually completely different species, but I don't really take that. <laughs> but uh, because others claim that one of the Aedra or Daedra actually created them from a group of Bosmer. And that would actually make some sense. And let me explain why. In the Elder Scrolls lore, crossbreeding is very much possible. But it seems to work better for some races than others. The human and elvish races can procreate without much problem. This confirms the Elnofe story, as this easy crossbreeding proves that they are genetically very similar and similar enough to be able to crossbreed, so they must have some sort of common ancestor. And the reason they are genetically similar is because they have a common ancestor. 
whose genes are still very much in their own DNA at this point in time. However, in the case of some races, the Khajiits, the Argonians and the Orcs, things are a little different. Argonians can't crossbreed, and if we look at their origin, that makes complete sense. They are a different species altogether, because, well, they have a completely different set of chromosomes and DNA. However, Orcs and Khajiit can crossbreed. It just doesn't always work. However, in the rare cases that it does work, it proves that they share some genes with the common ancestors of the men and the elves. For the orcs, it's quite logical, as the quest with Septimus in Skyrim actually lets you collect elf blood, and you also have to collect orc blood, meaning they are quite similar genetically to elves. However, the fact that crossbreeding is harder for them means that they differ greatly from men and men. Not, not, not enough differences not to be able to procreate, just enough differ differences to make it significantly harder. For the Khajiit, this is almost the same story, but they are even further genetically different. It's even harder for them to crossbreed with humans or elves, but there have been some couples in history where it has worked, it's just very rare. So to visualize this, if all these races come from the same type of ancestor, it would mean that human and elvish races among each other probably share about 99% of their genes or even more, because you just need that to be able to procreate. While elves and humans probably share well a little less, maybe it's 97% of their genes maybe even more. Again, I, I don't exactly know. And elves and orcs probably share about 92% with each other. And perhaps Khajiit even less, like maybe even 89 or something. We have no documented proof of this, but since Khajiit and orcs both stem from elvish ancestors, it would make sense that the chance of successful crossbreeding with elvish races would be easier for them than to crossbreed with the human races, as they are in, well, they all do stem from the Elnofe, but they're even further related. So we don't have any proof of that, but that's what my personal guess would be. So now we've painted somewhat of a picture of how DNA is divided in Tamriel among the races. I think that it would make sense if all the elvish and human races, including orcs and Khajiit, all have 46 chromosomes, as that is the amount that humans in our universe have. If they would have more or less, it would make them too genetically different to be able to procreate with the other races. So I think that all those races all have the same amount of chromosomes, 46. As for the amount of chromosomes in Argonians, we simply don't know. As they are completely a different separate species, they could have 10 chromosomes or even 200, or not even be based on DNA for as far as we know. The final answer for that is that we simply have no way to prove or even speculate on the amount of chromosomes that, we ha that they have. Even if we would take the chromosome count for reptilians, there is a huge variation in that, and so it's not a reliable source. So after all this talk of crossbreeding, you might wonder, why don't we see half elves or half Khajiits? The answer on the surface is actually pretty simple. Well, I say on the surface, because this gets weird. <laughs> almost always, and I say almost always, because exceptions do exist, the child gets the race of the mother. There have been some exceptions, but it's really, really rare. This would mean that somehow in the Elder Scrolls universe, you get certain genes always from the mother. This is really something we don't ever encounter in humans. <laughs> in humans in our universe, the chromosomes divide at random with a 50-50 chance. You'll always get 23 of your chromosomes from both your mother and your father, so they can form 23 chromosome pairs. The thing in the Elder Scrolls universe is however that the chromosome pair 15, which determines the most racial traits in humans, is apparently always coming from the mother. Or the genes in it are at least coming from the mother, the, in the chromosome pair. So this would mean that the genes coming from the mother in that chromosome pair are always dominant over the father's genes. But even then, it would mean that the mother had an other pair of chromosomes she got from her father, so that if the one that made it into the genes of the baby would be from her father and her father would be something different, he would not have the mother's race, the baby. So in this scenario, the particular chromosome from the mother always has to be dominant over the one from the father. And the mother needs to have some kind of mechanism to force the chromosome of her race into the baby's chromosomes. 
The thing is, this is not really anything that's possible in our own universe. And it's just all very illogical, but somehow it works <laughs> in the Elder Scrolls universe. So we will just leave that be for now and just accept that the baby will always have the race of the mother. But with that said, the baby does get traits from the father, like the shape of the nose, ears, or even the skin color. A red guard mother with a north father is still a red guard, the baby. The baby is still a red guard, but he has a bit of a lighter skin color. So if that's true, how do we define Elder Scrolls races in this video? I think that the simple answer in this is just the racial traits. For example, the Altmer have an affinity with magic, the Dunmer has a re have a resistance to fire, the Nords have a resistance to cold. The fact that the father can influence the appearance does not really bring uh, anything to the table except for that the race will be bogged down to just these racial powers that we have in the Elder Scrolls. However, now I make it sound like appearance does not really matter for a race, but clearly appearance does matter for a race. So. Appearance also plays a part, as certain things like skin color, eye color and hair color are also influenced by race, but those are apparently not fixed like the racial traits, because they can be smoothed over by the father's race. So I would probably say that while the genes for the racial trait are always dominant when it comes to from the mother, the genes for skin, eyes or even hair color are maybe a bit less dominant. They are still dominant, but they can be influenced by the genes from the father instead of the racial traits from the father just being completely uh, repressed, like it happens with the racial traits that make you a race, if it makes sense. This is once again something that is not really possible in our own universe, but it's the only explanation I could come up with with my li limited genetic knowledge and Google. <laughs> I mean, it's really illogical. This influence from the father, however, can actually very well be seen in the games, in the Breton race. The Bretons are actually a product of the Durenia elves crossbreeding with the local humans of High Rock for centuries onward. These centuries and centuries of crossbreeding have actually made it so that both the elvish traits and human traits in them have become less, and they are now some kind of a half elf. They're still human, but they have traits from elves. This long, 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 long time of crossbreeding has made it so that the, the fact that the mother's race always prevails has somehow also been smoothed over. And thus, even the normally strongly dominant racial trait gene was a bit altered in the Bretons. So that's one explanation, but it's kind of <laughs> game breaking with what I said before. But it's the only explanation I could find, well, except for this explanation. That it could also be that the Needs, the human ancestors, who were also the Breton's ancestors, did not yet have a fixed racial gene and were thus more easily altered, with, non, not the, ra with the racial trait gene not be, uh, being dominant. This would actually make some sense as to how the other races were created out of the Needs, as they were still, still changeable and thus evolved into the Nords, the Imperials, the, the Red Guards. But it would also break some of the info we encountered before, as then this same explanation would have to go up for the Altmer, the ancestors of the elves. And then we would have no clue where the motherly dominance came from. So basically I personally think that we just need to think that the final answer is that this is a video game and we shouldn't think too much about it. And yet I can't seem to help to be able to try to find logical answers in illogical video games. But again, that's what you come to my channel for, I suppose. So if you like the video, like, subscribe, uh, do those things for my personal, for constant personal contact with me, there's my Discord and Instagram in the description. There's also my Patreon in the description if you want to support me in a more personal way, get my soundtrack and perhaps, <laughs> I don't know, just try to support me and you get your name at the end of every video. I would really appreciate it. But with that said, I will see you in the next video. Man, my vacation has really made me lazy. This video cost a lot of uh, cost a lot of effort, and my English is bad. But uh, yeah, see you next time. It's already way too long. <laughs>